Hey, welcome back, you guys. And this week, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look at Blue Cat Audio's Destructor plugin. Now, this plugin is basically designed to be an all-in-one distortion channel strip. It's basically allowed to give you whatever distortion you can imagine and emulate a bunch of other things. It's able to emulate um, guitar amps, bass amps, distortion pedals, tubes, transistors, tape, a ridiculous amount of things. And along that, it's also a fully-fledged channel strip. It has a gate, which I can show you right here. It has a gate, a compressor, a preamp or pre-emphasis filter, which allows you to either, if you hit this expert, this E, allows you to have full control over its uh, parameters. You have a low and high pass filter, a high and low shelf, three fully parametric EQs, which have um, extremely tight cues or extremely wide cues. You also have this really nifty comb filtering, which causes lots of phasing and comb filtering. You're also able to have up to 10 to 40 dBs of change with the EQs, both of them. You can have spectrum or color or gray. You can also show the line or the original reference curve if you have one loaded up from a previous session or from the Freak Analyst, you can load them in here. And again, you have gains too, you have output gains. And if you hide this E button, it brings it back to macro controls, which is really cool. Each section right here, each of the main sections from the pre-emphasis, the destruction and the post filter all have factory presets that you can load into them. So this is basically designed to emulate your amp head or the input EQ filters that are in the circuitry. So you have a bunch of different amp heads and stuff like that set up to the top one. The bottom one is the exact same thing, only this time the presets are geared towards cabinets, bass cabs, guitar cabs, and you know other basic stuff like that. So you have also like comb filters, comb boost, comb cuts, DC cuts, flats, high pass, low passes. The most powerful and the most in-depth section is the destruction. You can load up presets just like all the others, right? But a cool thing is if you hit this expert mode and you hit the plus button, you have controls inside of controls. So if we change this preset again to something like this electro, you'll see how everything changed. You can also load presets or create your own shapes. So you have a bunch of analog from asymmetrical clipping with the crossover, asymmetrical soft tubes. And if you notice, when you change these sections, only the inside sections, the, the darker blue, will change. The uh, shape of the dynamics, the dynamics, the drive, and all this stuff on the outer layer is not changing. Now, one thing that we really have to talk about is the shape dynamics. This, you can choose a source from input to the gate to the compressor and the preamp or the external. You also have an attack and release and the range knob. The range basically just determines if you have no dynamics or if it's very dynamic. And the attack and release are basically how it's going to react. You also have a dynamic ceiling of how much dynamics you're going to give it and a dynamic threshold of when it's going to be getting hit. You have these shape functions, which basically kind of control like little macro controls of the overall thing. You have oversampling from zero all the way to four times four. And since I am at 48K, 192 would be times four. You have this really interesting thing that adds phase shifting into it. It basically adds phase shifts to the frequency that you're selecting. Now, again, with the actual curve right here, you can control every aspect of it. So you can make it like really crazy and wonky. Whoa, just like that. And then you can actually make it non-symmetrical or symmetrical. You can smooth it out. You can rectify it, which basically kind of really drives it really heavily. You can bit crush it, and you can even do a dynamic shape mix. So you can shape the way that you've actually shaped it. So you can mix just the shape, and then just, on, just like how the drive section of the main output of it can be completely dry or completely wet. Now you have a drive that goes all the way to 11, which basically hits it very hard. It's basically just boosting the signal into the clipper extremely hard. You have a decimation, which is basically um, akin to a down sampler. So if you see here how it says your bass with none, you're at 48 hertz. At two, I'm at 24, so that's half of that. Times four, I'm at 1200 hertz. And you know that will cause aliasing because it's basically down sampling. So you have control of none, weak, light, normal, medium, or strong, or full. And you also have a gain, which is plus or minus 40. That's the same thing with the input and output gain. All the gains here are basically plus and minus 40. Input and output, plus and minus 40. You have a built-in brick wall limiter, which is zero latency. You just turn that on and off. And yeah, that's basically it. Like, like I said, the uh, emphasis filter or the post filter right here has a tone stack or the, I guess, the combo amps. So you can change it. And if you see the E, you can actually uh, view the shapes that it's taking. 
And that's basically emulating the cabs with the mics on them. Now this is a really cool and really powerful tool. Since this is on the Mixbus, I'm gonna put this onto the analyzer section. And I'm gonna show you what this comb filter does. So this is on right now. So let's just press play, and then I will show you the comb filtering. Now that is really cool. That is adding a lot of phase distortion and a lot of really cool, interesting effects to it. I've never seen a plugin that actually does that just stock standard with like full control like that. One thing that I think would be really cool to add would be maybe a bandwidth control with this thing. But you know, it is just a comb filter. So that's enough for that. Now let's load up the destructor for the guitar amps. Because I am using it on three guitar amps or three guitars. All have been DI'd. This is a session I was recording with a artist when we were kind of trying to like write some music for him. And we're using the same tone, the same uh, settings, but I have a post EQ that is different on each one of them. So this is one of them, and this is the other one. See how they're slightly different. And I do that for any guitar. Even if I record a real guitar, I will have post EQ because it is nice to be able to fine tune the shape of the sound. So we have them both soloed up right here. I'm going to bypass them to show you what's going on. And I'm going to turn it on and so you can see the type of sound that we're getting. So this is clean. So as you can hear from that, it sounds good. It sounds like an amp. It sounds decent, actually. And I like what I did. And as you can see here, I basically loaded up the Kitty Distortion 2. When you have this little star, it means that you've changed the preset. So I changed the custom preset that it came with. And then I loaded up this hard saturation bump, and I changed that to a bluesy drive shaper. And then I kind of tweaked it slightly. I tweaked the drive, and then I used a Sildano Plus Soft cabinet, and I tweaked that too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unsolo one of these, and I'm going to show you what happens when you mess with the tone stack. So let's move this over here and let's switch to the presets. So as you can hear from that, I mean, it changes the sound completely. Um, like completely, and that's just with the head, which is what you would expect. Now, a cool thing, I'm gonna reload up this preset right now so I can uh, properly show you what I wanna do. The really cool thing I really wanna show you guys is when you change, and you keep everything the same, but you change the distortion. So I'm using this, this Shaper Bluesy Driver because this is kind of for their bluesy amps and I really liked it. So I'm gonna press play, and we're gonna change it from that to lead drive, all right? So here we go. So those are really subtle changes, but I'm noticing different things. The transistor doesn't have as much low end, the bluesy drive has a little bit more fatness, and the lead drive has more grit. So let's throw this into Pentode and let's see what type of sound we're getting out of this. <laughs> Now, a cool thing is, is when you drive it less and less and less, you're hearing more and more of differences. So when I drive things really, really lightly, I'm actually hearing huge differences because um, the way it's slightly starting to distort is it's distorting very dynamically and very like depending on the, on the frequency response. So when I start distorting everything heavier, so because everything's clipping it all the time, it starts sounding, you know, just like distortion. But because it's emulating these different types of curves and these different types of dynamic responses, I'm getting these cool little sounds. And like I said, I am using the hard bump 
because I wanted to have almost no dynamics. I wanted to basically just crush it and just kind of use these like light, gentle distortions really heavily. Now, let's go to the Sildano. Let's change this up and see what we get. <laughs> So as you can hear from that, again, huge difference, like night and day difference. It's really cool. I like how I can get all these crazy changes with just like changing it up. And as you can see, if you wanted to, you could easily just hit that expert button and you can just make it boom, do what you want it to do. So next what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this back into stereo and I'm going to show you the bass guitar because this is something really interesting. I'm using two instances of Destructor here. Now again, this is just like the other thing I have post-processing because this is a mix technically. It's not a finished mix, this is just a rough mix, but this is a general idea and I don't want the uh, low end of the bass to kind of like get in the way of the kick drum because this is a metal mix technically. But check out what I'm doing. I'm using the blues drive pedal and I'm using this uh, B-Man, uh, I guess this bass man overdrive, which basically gives it this really picky slappy sound. So if I bypass them both, And now this is it with just the amp. So now what I want you to do is I want you to listen to this with the amp on. And it does sound way different and I kind of like it because this is metal. For more of a mellow or rock thing, I probably would have used a more thicker, warmer sound. But for this, I needed that high end grit. But now listen to this because I'm about to turn on the blues driver. And I'll have something on the screen that'll say when it's bypassed. So listen, it's gonna start off with nothing and then it's gonna be brought in. And you hear that growl? I really like that growl. I love that growl. That makes it sound so much better in the mix. It makes it stand out so much more and it makes it kind of more just like in your face. So that's that on the guitars. So let me actually play this for you guys, just with everything playing, so you can hear what we're working with. And that's what you have to work with. I'm using just DIs. I have a little home studio here where I do all this stuff, and the room is treated and everything, but it's small, and it's a one-bedroom apartment. And I do have amps, but we were recording this at like 2 a.m. So I decided to just use the uh, DIs and I was going to reamp it later. But I got this and I was like, you know what, let's try this out. And I actually really dug the sound that I was getting. So next what I want to do is I want to use Destructor on the drum bus. Destructor is basically designed to do anything you want it to do. And it has presets for almost everything from amp simulations to guitar pedals, which if uh, Gilm, the uh, creator, is watching this, I want a lot more guitar pedals. Those things are amazing. Um, but now we should be on the drum bus. Yes, we are. So what we're going to do, we're going to load up one of these drum bus settings. And let's check out one of these crazy ones. So we got this. You don't mess with the 808s. I, I like that. I really like that. Okay, I'm going to bring this down because I'm noticing that these are often very loud. So we're going to solo up the drums. I'm going to have it bypass and I'm going to bring it in. And you're not even going to need a bypass uh, little thing on the, on the screen because you'll be able to hear it probably. So here we go. That sounds really cool. That sounds very, very cool. Now imagine if you did that on a parallel bus. That would be really cool. So let's mess with some more of these. Let's just go back even farther. Let's see, we got, what else we got? We got thick. Let's press thick. Wow, thick is loud. Thick is very loud. Let's put a little bit of a gate on that too. All right, let's do thick again. Okay, that's cool. 
I also just realized that I'm using a mono instance on this. I made that mistake earlier too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slap a stereo instance on there instead. And this will give us an even cooler sound. Boom. All right, so now let's go back here and let's listen to the drums. And let's do this meatballs, whatever this is. Let's check this out. Let's bring down the gain. I like this Vintager. I like what it's doing. It's, it's, I don't know what it's doing. Let me see what's going on with the EQs because it says flat, but I don't believe it. No, it's not flat. All right. So it's basically just kind of dipping it down. That sounds really cool. Let's mess with the, with the treble. That sounds really cool. Makes it sound really old school and like just interesting. Um, let's see this drum fatter two or I I because there's a two there too. Um, again, bring down the volume. Let's see what we get. A cool thing is I'm noticing my volume, my output volume is like half. It's RMS has been brought up so much. Let's actually do this in the mix. Um, I'm going to bypass this and then bring it in and let's see what happens. That sounds really cool. I actually like that. Um, I would like that in parallel. But I like what it's doing, and like I said, in parallel, it would sound great. So that's about it for this demonstration. Like I said, this thing has a ridiculous amount of control. I mean, I know I just basically kind of ran through the controls because, as you can see, you can make them as simple as you want or as complex as you want. And honestly, I don't think I can properly tell you without spending an hour and a half doing this video how to use these controls properly. They have a ridiculous amount of control, and they're very, very powerful. And they actually don't use that much CPU. now. I have a lot of praise for this. I really like this plugin, but there's some things that I would really like. I would like to be able to bypass the compressor gate. I know that Blue Cat Audio usually has their compressor gate working in tandem, as in they're at the same time. I would like to be able to bypass them. I would also like to be able to add my own presets, so that way when I'm loading up sounds, if I want a really specific um, compression or uh, gating, I can just load that up without having to redial it in. And I would like a mix knob for the output. Because I like how you have, a, you have a mix knob for the distortion, but I would like it so I could use this, just slap it without having to uh, make a parallel bus and just mix it. Because some of those, those drum presets I think sound really cool and I would probably use them. Like those distorted ones I'd totally use on a snare. Those pumping ones I'd probably use on a kick. And then I really like the way that they sounded on the toms. It really just made them sound like flat. So I could use that just under the tom and have the, uh, the dynamic tom with the low end kind of rumbling while having the flat just like hitting tom just, just under it so you can always hear it. That would be really cool. And maybe, maybe adding a second stage of distortion in case I want to lightly do two different types of distortions. This overall has a ridiculous amount of control. And um, I think that'd be really cool if you could have two destruction sections. But that's asking for a lot. Overall, I really like this plugin. As you can kind of tell, this is a really long video, but that's because this plugin has ridiculous amount of control and that's something I love. I love control and I love how you can just hit an E button and be like, nah, I don't want any of it. Just give me basic controls. Highly recommend this plugin. It's like 99 bucks, totally worth it. And you can see the hundreds of presets in there. You can mix and match and make them into thousands and then you can create your own. So I really like this plugin. I hope you guys like this video and I hope you guys like this plugin too. Please leave me comments. Um, let me know what you guys think of this. Let me know what you guys think of this plugin. Please check out our website. We have a new website. It's www.inthedaw.com. And we will have a full-on in-depth written article about this there. And that will be linked under the video below. Hope you guys like this. Like, subscribe, and please leave comments. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.